Turning professional following a silver medal winning Olympic campaign in 1988, Riddick Big Daddy Bo amassed an impressive 43 wins from his 19 year long career. Ooh, there it goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. Gets up from this, he fools me. Known for his all-action inside fighting style, the New York native etched his place in the history books for his undisputed title win over unbeaten boxing legend Evander Holyfield. Picking up all three of the major world title straps, as well as handing the real deal his first career defeat. And new heavyweight champion of the world. With an abundance of skill, speed, and power. The brash Brownsville Bangers' aggressive phone booth fighting style captured the heart of millions during the 1990s. His unrelenting ambition to outbrawl and destroy his opponents often resulted in exciting, fast paced fan favorite shootouts. Oh, uppercut again, cuts her in serious trouble. Camille's lane, one punch away from stopping it, and there it is. After almost 15 years since his last professional bout, we take a look back at the crazy career of former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bowe. 18 months into his professional career and looking to extend his unbeaten record to 20 wins without defeat, Big Daddy Bo took a trip to Vegas to face fan favorite Smokin' Burt Cooper. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Any question? Shake hands and good luck. Piling on the pressure from the opening bell, Cooper's aggressive inside fighting style troubled unbeaten Bo for the first three minutes, swarming the New Yorker with unrelenting pressure and vicious two-fisted attacks. As you can see, a very tall and long arm guy. He needs some distance to punch and he's not getting any. Cooper's just not letting him have any, nor is he trying to get any, and that's what he's gonna hear about when he gets to the corner. Opting to use his jab and box from range in the following frame, Big Hitting Bo floored his overaggressive opponent with a perfectly placed right hand late in the second round. Oh, good right hand by Bo, and Cooper is down. Looking to end matters with less than seven seconds left on the clock, Bo followed up his attack with a blistering 12 punch combination, sending Cooper stumbling to the canvas and unable to proceed. Cooper make it to the end of round two. Yeah, he's gonna beat the cannot be saved by the bell. And that is it. Steele stops it. He is definitely out. He just came within one second of beating, of beating that bell. One second more, and that would have been all. The finish was clinical and ferocious, bludgeoning his highly rated opponent inside two rounds, improving his record to 20 wins without defeat. And winner by TKO, Reddick Lamont Bo. Edging closer to a crack at world title glory, Bo this time faced off against 1984 Olympic gold medalist Tyro Biggs. Wasting little time, Bo immediately set about his opponent, rocking him 10 seconds into the bout. Bo wearing the all white trunks, Terrell Biggs in the black, and Terrell Biggs takes a right hand right on the forehead, Alex. He, he definitely wobbled, Dan, and he does not want to get into a trading contest with Rudin. Able to survive the relentless assault of stiff jabs and crunching right hands, tired and busted up Biggs was eventually floored by a clubbing right hand in the eighth round. Oh, a big right hand and down goes Terrell Biggs. Back to his feet, but unable to properly protect himself, the gold medal winner was wiped out with a flurry of unanswered blows, forcing referee Frank Cappuccino to bring a halt to the beating. Up in the commission, up in the ring post, up in the over. It's over. Frank Cappuccino stops the fight here in the eighth round. It was another impressive performance from the rising heavyweight contender, edging himself one step closer to a crack at one of the three major title belts. Two months after halting the Atlantic City Express and rapidly closing in on a world title opportunity, Bo faced 24 and 3 opponent Elijah Tillery.
Enraged by Tillery's clinching and survival tactics, frustrated but undeterred Bo smashed the awkward American down with a bone-crunching combination late in the very first round. Well, down goes Tillery in round one from what looked like a, a bit of a scruffy left hook. What ensued was utter carnage as both boxers continued to brawl after the bell, resulting in Tillery being flipped over the ropes head first. In serious trouble now. Well, here they go. And uh, they completely ignored the referee. And uh, Rock Newman are getting up and he actually pulls Tillery outside the ring. <laughs> and uh, all hell let loose there. And poor old Tillery landed almost on his head on the floor. When order was eventually restored, Bo was announced as the winner, with Tillery being disqualified for his blatant kicking during the heated exchange. Fighting in a final eliminator for a shot at the WBA title being held by undisputed champion Evander Holyfield, Bo faced stubborn South African contender Pierre Kutzer. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on. The six foot four South African champion had his fair share of success in the early going, but Bo's superior skill and power proved too much to handle for Kutzer, who had begun to show signs of facial damage as early as the second round. You see the guts of Pierre Kutzer. He has felt that right hand and just keeps coming back. The crowd ooing and eyeing after the uppercut that snapped Kutzer's head back. Bloodied and bruised from Bo's murderous attacks, Kutzer put on an incredible display of heart and bravery to remain upright throughout, only touching the canvas after a low blow late in the sixth round. Bo's left jab is working like magic now. Low blow by Bo, followed by a right hand to the chin. He was going down from the low blow, and Bo rocked him with the right hand, not to the side of the head. Absorbing a worrying amount of damage and suffering from swelling around both eyes, the South African's challenge was brought to an end in the following frame, when legendary referee Mills Lane intervened to save the battered boxer from any further punishment. Use your jail to stay back a little bit. Oh, uppercut again. Cuts her in serious trouble. To Mills Lane, one punch away from stopping it, and there it is. End of story. Riddick Bull a seventh round technical knockout which should send him forward toward a heavyweight title matchup with Evander Holyfield. It was another impressive showing from the Brownsville brawler, perfectly setting up his highly anticipated showdown against undisputed champion Evander Holyfield. Four months after stopping Pierre Kutzer, Bo returned to Sin City to take on undisputed champion of the world Evander Holyfield in a battle between two unbeaten boxers, with all three major world title belts up for grabs. Take the belt at all time. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. In what unraveled to be an all-time heavyweight classic, both men refused to take a backward step, prompting a wild back-and-forth battle from the sound of the opening bell. By the champion oh, Evander oh, Holyfield. Oh, oh, oh. And all to hold and hit, and they brawl in the center of the ring. Evander Holyfield showing his warrior's heart, believes he has Bo hurt. Outweighed by 30 pounds, but still favored to win with the Vegas bookmakers, over-aggressive Holyfield was already showing signs of damage around both eyes from Bo's bludgeoning attacks as early as the fourth round. Six for Holyfield. There's a left and a right by Holyfield and a left. Bo giving the right hand in return. Left hand by Holyfield. These are solid shots, but the champion does not seem able to hurt Riddick Bo. In one of the most memorable action-packed rounds in the history of the sport, Bo looked to end matters in round 10. All this time, he can't understand someone being so dirty. So you see Holyfield going down in this round, and Bo stuns him with an uppercut, and just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. What a heart by Holyfield. He's going to stay on his feet. He's hanging in there. Gets away from a right hand, blocks another one. Bo throwing and throwing, now goes to the body. Holyfield somehow standing up, but staying Referee. too close Referee. to Bo. Joe Cortez watching. Champion gets the benefit of the doubt. That was a right uppercut 
that started that sequence. On the verge of being stopped on his feet, unbreakable Holyfield refused to wilt, weathering the storm before firing back with bombs of his own. Don't rest. Rest with your jab. Bo should be taking that kind of advice. Look at Holyfield. What a warrior. Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has Bo wobbly. And he lands the right hand. Everybody in the Thomas and Mack Center on their feet. This round should be greeted with a standing ovation at the end. You've seen the best of both men. Eating a steady supply of Big Daddy's brutal uppercuts, a tiring Holyfield was eventually felled 30 seconds into the 11th. Oh, Holyfield in serious trouble now. The bow has got to be cool oh, trying to finish him, though. There's the uppercut again. The mouthpiece is out of Holyfield's mouth, and he's going to go down. And Holyfield gets up very early in the count. Able to endure Bo's oncoming onslaught to hear the final bell, Holyfield's reign as undisputed champion of the world was cut short, losing on all three of the judges' scorecards, crowning Big Daddy Bo the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. The winner by the unanimous decision and new heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick. Less than three months after his history-making win over Evander Holyfield, Bo made the first defense of his newly acclaimed titles against dynamite Michael Dose. Any questions at this time? I want a good clean fight. No, I want you to protect yourself at all times. Shake hands now and God bless you both. Looking to make quick work of his first defense, Bo got to work immediately, flooring his foe less than 90 seconds into the first. Dose in trouble. Dose is hurt against the ropes. Joe Santarpia steps in, it'll be a standing eight count. Showing no mercy for his veteran opponent, Bo followed up the knockdown with an eye-watering 20 unanswered punches, forcing referee Joe Santarpia to intervene and save defenseless Dokes from any further punishment. Trying to clinch it away. Good to luck out of it. by Dokes, but he took one as well. Bo is not hurt, That's Dokes it. is. That's it, Dokes is hurt bad. Dokes is out on his feet. Wobbled again, down on the second strand of the rope. He's defenseless now. Santarpia steps in, and that's it. The fight is over. It was a destructive performance from the newly crowned champion, smashing his tough challenger just over two minutes into the first round. Choosing to make his next defense against journeyman Jesse Ferguson, Bo took a trip to Washington to headline a bill co-featured by the highly anticipated middleweight showdown between unbeaten Roy Jones Jr. and Bernard Hopkins. I want a good clean fight and you want to obey my commands at all times. You have any questions at this time? Okay, shake hands now, take your corners, good luck to you both. Bo blasted out the overmatched journeyman with ease, freezing Ferguson on his feet with a perfectly timed left hook late in the first. Up against the right hand and a, probably not a good place to be. And the left hook lands and Ferguson goes down. Will he make it out of round one? Michael Dokes didn't. Hazard counting. Eight count. Ferguson struggling to get up, and he makes it. How you feel, Jesse? Surprisingly able to get back to his feet before being saved by the bell, Ferguson was brutally wiped out just seconds into the following round. Punch that numbers say that Riddick Bowe landed two-thirds of his blows in round one. And this is going to go pretty quickly now. And that's it. That's it. Bo's fight-ending combination was vicious, completely wiping out his overmatched opponent with ease, perfectly setting up his highly anticipated rematch against former undisputed king Evander Holyfield. Squaring off for the second time almost a year on from their first meeting, unbeaten Bo and former 2-8 undisputed champion Evander Holyfield got it on for his second time. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions? 
from the challenger. Give me questions from the champion. Let's get it on. Titled Repeat or Revenge, the real deal refused to give Bo any credit for their previous encounter, insisting he lost the fight due to his own mistakes he made in the lead up to their bout. These remarks enraged Bo, prompting a fast paced start from the New Yorker, forcing Holyfield onto his back foot from the opening bell. All the action so far, and there's a hard right. Bo should never try to waste that kind of energy on a fighter like Evander Holyfield, who recovers. He gets hurt, but he recovers too much. Bo came in looking as though he was thinking first round knockout. A lot of right hands, one of them to the body, several to the head, and now Evander has weathered that early storm. Forced to make use of his superior footwork and quick fire combinations, Holyfield's defensively responsible approach earned him an early lead on the HBO commentator's scorecards, impressing the boxing royalty ringside with his fast hands and improved defense. Abrasion above the left eye of Riddick Bow. There may be blood beginning to emerge from Bo's left eye. Holyfield lands a right, right on the target. And a left hand for Holyfield. And they swing and swing after the bell. And look at this. Suffering from facial injuries for the first time in his professional career, busted up Bo looked out on his feet late in the fifth round, prompting the real deal to go looking for the finish, hammering the startled champion with heavy two-fisted attacks. I wasn't in shape, but I said I can whip this old guy. Bo made me hurt. He healed her. Bo is hurt. Holyfield gunning for a stoppage here. It would shock the world. Stuns Bo again, and the round comes to a close, the bell saving Riddick Bo from further punishment. In some of the most memorable scenes recorded in the history of boxing, midway through the seventh round, paraglider James Miller bizarrely crashed into the ring, halting the action whilst a hectic riot ensued ringside. And somebody in a parachute has just landed on the edge of the ring, has been pulled away by security guards. The fight has been brought to a halt. There's a massive melee at ringside as this fellow with a motorized parachute has landed right on top of spectators and officials at ringside. He's in the midst of a mass of security guards now. This is a monumental disaster. The action continued after a 20 minute interval with Holyfield seemingly benefiting most from the break. Blood trickling again from above the left eye of Riddick Bowe, and now all down his nose, and bound to affect the vision in the left eye, and Holyfield takes advantage with the right hand. Sensing he was down on the scorecards, Big Daddy picked up the pace, hammering Holyfield with his signature inside attacks. Holyfield should just forget trying to slug it out with this guy, hurt him and get it out of the way. Holyfield staying in, becoming a target. Bo's starting to heat up. The back and forth action continued right up until the last second, prompting referee Mills Lane to jump in and separate both boxers from continuing to exchange after the final bell. Crowd rises to its feet. For the second year in a row, they fought the fight of the year. Judges Jerry Roth and Pat Jarman both scored the fight for Evander, with third judge Chuck Giampa scoring the bout a draw, forcing Bo to hand over his WBA and IBF straps to the former champion and head home with his undefeated record no longer intact. Returning to the ring after his unanimous decision win over undefeated Larry Donald, Big Daddy Bo earned himself a crack at the lesser regarded WBO title held by big hitting Herbie Hyde. Obey my commands at all times, shake hands, good luck. The Nigerian born Brit fought well for the first two rounds, outworking the former champion with a fast snappy jab, frustrating Bo with his awkward in and out style. 
now to the body. Riddick Bowe looking ill-prepared to defend himself against the supposedly outmatched Herbie Hyde. The odds in the sports books here hovered between 4-1 to one and 5-1. to one. Bowe a lopsided favorite. As soon as the former champion was able to land, unbeaten Hyde unraveled in an instant, hitting the canvas three times in the third round. have been hit with a very, very short punch. He's out on his feet. Sight. He's out on his feet and in danger of getting hurt if Bo can put something together. Down goes Hyde again. There still hasn't been an official knockdown ruling. Now this one gets a count. I had mentioned that Hyde looked tired. He looks exhausted now, and it's only the third round of the fight. And now Hyde handles Bo for the moment again, lacing him with lefts and rights. And as Bo opens up to try to finish, Hyde takes advantage and falls down again. Got hit with an uppercut, right uppercut, right on the button. Down a total of seven times, the WBO champion was eventually counted out following two clubbing right hands in the sixth. Maybe it went with that good living. Well, in part, it's because of the nature of the opponents he's been fighting. That may be it. Will this be enough? There's a count going. It's not going to make it up. Bo picked up the lesser-known WBO title for his troubles, helping bring credibility to the newly established organization. Making the first defense of his freshly acquired WBO belt, the Brownsville brawler faced former amateur foe Jorge Luis Gonzalez. It's a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? No. Any questions here? Let's get it on. After a heated buildup with several pre-fight skirmishes, Cuban Gonzalez was talking openly about wanting to kill the brash New Yorker, fueling Bo to put a brutal beating on the unbeaten Cuban. And throws very few punches in return. Bo risking disqualification there, and that was a stupid move. Taking a pounding throughout, the highly rated amateur was wiped out with a thunderous right hand midway through the sixth round. To Eddie Futch. On paper, that looks like a big advantage. Ooh, right there it hand. goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now, Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. The final punch was tremendous, completely freezing the Cuban on his feet before hitting the canvas face first, requiring immediate medical attention. Five months on from his sensational sixth round knockout of amateur rival Jorge Luis Gonzalez, Bo returned to Vegas to face Evander Holyfield for a third time. I want a good clean fight, obey my command at all time, give me good sportsmanlike conduct, understood? All right, shake hands, good luck to both of you. Suffering from heart issues discovered after his fight with Michael Moore, Holyfield was the sizable underdog, with many ringside viewers concerned for the boxer's safety, prompting HBO commentator George Foreman to call for an end to the bout when the real deal was under Bo's heavy fire in the fifth round. Flip Omansky, the Nevada State Athletic Commission doctor, is sitting in Holyfield's corner. Holyfield taking a couple stop, of heavy shots. Stop. Holyfield, stop. Holyfield is really hurting. He looks like he's ready to go. He looks like he has nothing to get back. He just became 33 going on 53. Commander Holyfield has no, no, no. never been knocked out in his professional boxing career. Undeterred Holyfield dramatically turned things around in the following frame, flooring Bo for the first time in his professional career with a perfectly placed left hook. Showing immense toughness and heart many observers claimed he never possessed, Bo rallied back in the eighth round, flooring a tiring Holyfield with a short right hand during a heated exchange. But I still scored that other end round five, nine to nine. I scored it even. I'll tell you, this is tremendous stuff. Hard right hand inside by Holyfield, and now down goes Evander. A right hand, hand by Bo. A right hand inside as Holyfield lunged to get back at him. 
did the trick. I don't think he's going to make it. Somehow managing to climb back to his feet, the former 2-8 undisputed king was wiped out mere seconds later as Bo swiftly ended matters with two final right hands. Third knockdown this on is Holyfield's it. career. This is the end. The fourth, and that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. What a fight. Once again, they even exceed the highest expectations we had. Despite hitting the canvas for the first time in his career, Bo had proven his resilience and determination to battle back at end matters inside the distance, becoming the first man to deliver the real deal, his first knockout defeat inside 33 professional bouts. One of the most infamous nights of Riddick Bo's chaotic career was his eagerly awaited showdown against unbeaten Polish heavyweight Andrew Galata in the summer of 1996. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out boxing at the bell. Good luck, 12 rounds. Coming into the bout boasting an impressive 28 wins without defeat, determined Galata was seemingly taming the Brownsville brawler tagging Bo to head and body with regularity throughout their seven-round shootout. Big guys laying some big stuff on each other. Continuing to focus on Bo's body after a stern warning from referee Wayne Kelly, the powerful Pole's body attacks continued to venture south of the border, prompting Kelly to deduct a point two and a half minutes into the fourth round. To put out that much punching power and continue to do it. Come on, you saw a lot of measure Bo for the right hand and then missed it. Another low blow. This is a bad one. There's a point deducted point. from each of the three scorecards. Point. That point goes against Galata. This was minutes. a bad low blow foul. Rick, Disregarding the first telling off he received two rounds prior, the raging pole landed another deliberate low shot late in the sixth. Galata starting to Keep fall up. in love with his ability to hammer Bo up top. And now another low blow. And let's see if Wayne Kelly takes another point. point. He is. He does. That's the point. second point Look, deducted from the scorecards against Galata. Is that clear? Don't do it again. Refusing to listen to referee Wayne Kelly's two prior warnings, Galata got himself disqualified following another eye-watering low blow in the seventh round. Throw the combination, the things go good for him. He's just hammering Bo in close. Just hammering it. That was another low blow. Man, down goes it. Bo, and that's, that's it. it. That's it. Great. It's a disqualification. Team member of the Beau Entourage, Jason Harris, charged the ring in an attempt to smash his two-way radio over the head of Galata, inciting a riot inside the legendary Madison Square Garden, resulting in 16 arrests, 22 people injured, and a $250,000 fine for Beau's promoter, Rock Newman. Continuing their violent encounter from five months prior, Riddick Bo and Andrew Galata took a trip to Atlantic City to get it on for a second time. Off to a flying start from the opening bell, the big punching pole floored the former undisputed champion with a ferocious two-punch salvo 60 seconds into the second round. But Bo is pulling straight back after the jab of Galata. I think Bo's hurt! Bo's hurt! Wow. Big time hurt! Baby, this one's over. This but one's over. saw before, indicative Riddick Bowe is in deep trouble and has too much time to go. Able to weather the Warsaw Warriors' oncoming attacks, undeterred Bowe rallied back in the fourth round, smashing Galata down with his wild swinging attacks. Now, Bowe's got no control of his legs. Good shot by Bowe. He hurts Galata. What a turnaround. Galata is in deep trouble, but he comes back. The slugfest we anticipated, Bo is in big shape here. Galata, Galata is hurt. Is hurt big. What a turnaround. That's Down a, that, was, that seemed like a slip, but they call it a knockdown. It was a combination of punches. What drama. Really, Bo showing heart. Seemingly up on all three judges' scorecards sitting ringside, the ill-tempered pole bizarrely returned to illegal tactics, receiving his second point deduction for a deliberate soul-snatching three-punch combination below the belt. He's putting all oh, his oh, yeah. shot. That's a low one, and it's it got to be a penalty. It was two. And that was blatant. With both men showing signs of fatigue at the start of the fifth round, 
Galata floored an exhausted bow for a second time, hammering him to the canvas with a crunching combination to head and body. Comes down to taking advantage of your opportunity. Yeah, right hand. Deep trouble again. He could go. He will go if Galata puts a couple more. There he goes. Bow is on his way down. He's, He's down. down. He's down. A combination of attrition and precision by Galata. It's a matter of who takes advantage. Bow has got spaghetti legs and a minute to kill. Showing incredible toughness to absorb the pole's relentless attacks. Bo was dominated from round six up until the ninth, when Galata bizarrely committed another intentional foul, forcing referee Eddie Cotton to disqualify the bad tempered pole with just two seconds left on the clock of round nine. Bo, Andrew Galata, all that was advertised and more. Oh, another shit. another low blow by Galata. That's why Bo stayed in this fight. How are they? He it's over. It. Here we go again. The winner by disqualification, Riddick. Big Daddy Bo. Five months on from his disqualification win over the powerful pole, Big Daddy Bo announced his retirement from the sport at just 29 years of age, amassing an impressive 40 wins with just one defeat, before returning to the ring eight years later, competing at a much lower level.